In this video, we get ready to use Terraform with Azure. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Seraltos. HashiCorp Terraform is the de facto solution for infrastructure as code. Although each cloud provider has a native solution for deploying resources, Terraform provides a uniform language and workflows that's supported across multiple cloud, SaaS, and on-premises infrastructures. It's also open source. In this video, we'll review the basics of Terraform and get an environment ready to use Terraform with Azure. Before that, please like, smash that subscribe button, and click the bell icon for notifications of new content. It helps this channel and is greatly appreciated. Also, check out my courses on Azure Virtual Desktop and Hybrid Identities with Azure AD. The link is below. I have to be honest, I've overlooked Terraform in the past, not because there's anything wrong with Terraform, but because I don't typically work in multi-cloud environments and I've spent a lot of time learning ARM templates and BICEP, Terraform just hasn't been a priority. Infrastructure as code and DevOps pipelines continue to gain popularity and my own views on the right products to use is outweighed by what customers and clients use and overwhelmingly, they want to use Terraform. So with that said, welcome to the first of what I expect to be several videos on Terraform. The end goal is to integrate Terraform with DevOps pipelines using Azure DevOps and or GitHub Actions. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's start at the beginning with what Terraform is and what we need to get started. We can't talk about Terraform without talking about infrastructure as code. As infrastructure becomes more virtualized and abstract from hardware, we no longer have to worry about deploying and configuring servers, routers, and switches and other hardware, all with different interfaces and management tools. What used to be physical hardware made by a variety of vendors is now virtualized by a cloud provider of your choice, Azure for this example. Terraform uses a declarative language to create and manage resources and remove them when they're no longer needed. We can plan changes and see how the changes will impact the environment before we apply those changes. And it prevents configuration drift with strict state management. Terraform provides a consistent way to deploy infrastructure across multiple cloud SaaS and on-premises services using code. The code interacts with APIs with what's called a provider. A provider translates the Terraform code to a format supported by that cloud service. Each Terraform provider is maintained and updated in the Terraform registry. This is a directory of Terraform providers available to the public. The Azure provider is called Azure RM. Providers are updated with new features when they become available. The Terraform documentation lists all the resources available with a provider, along with examples for each. This is a frequent reference when building infrastructure with Terraform. But before we can get to that, we need to set up an environment for writing Terraform infrastructure as code. In the demo coming up, we're going to get a workstation ready for deploying resources to Azure with Terraform. We start by installing Terraform, then we'll install the Azure Command Line Interface, or CLI. Once that's done, we'll install VS Code to use as our editor. You don't need to use VS Code as the editor, but if you're just starting out, it's a great option at a good price. It's free. Let's get started with installing Terraform. The first step to using Terraform is to download the executable from the HashiCorp website. The link is in the comments below or the corresponding blog post. For this example, we'll use the 64-bit Windows version. Let's scroll down, and there it is. Terraform is distributed as a single executable, not an installer package. We have to do some manual configuration to get this working properly. Before we extract the file, let's open File Explorer. Go to the C drive. Create a folder at the root of the C drive called Terraform. Alternatively, you could add this folder to any location you'd like, just as long as you update that location in the path variable. Let's do that next. Let's go to System Environment Variables. From System Properties, we'll go to Environment Variables. Go to System Variables and find Path and Edit. We can see the existing paths for this computer. You could put this folder anywhere as long as you add that path here, or you could put it in a location that already has a path. Let's create a new path for C Terraform. 
C colon backslash Terraform. Click OK to exit out. Also, if you're working on a non-Windows computer, you'll need to extract the executable and update the system path according to that OS's requirements. Okay, let's go to the download directory. And let's extract the zip file we just downloaded. And browse to C Terraform. And select folder. And extract. So now we have a terraform.exe. We can change the view. Now we have Terraform EXE in the C Terraform directory. In the future, if you have to upgrade Terraform, simply download the newest version and overwrite the previous terraform.exe file. Let's test the progress. I'll close our file explorer and open a command prompt. From here, I'll type Terraform version. Terraform version should give you a version number in response. That indicates Terraform is installed correctly. If you don't get that message, verify the Terraform executable is in the correct directory and that the location is added to the path statement. Let's install the Azure CLI next. We'll close this. The Azure command line interface or CLI is used to connect to Azure and deploy resources. Go to the Azure CLI download page. The link of course is below. We'll download the latest release. Once finished, let's open up the download folder. And we'll run the Azure CLI MSI package. Accept the terms and install. We'll follow the prompts to install the Azure CLI. This will take a couple minutes to finish. I'll pause here and come back once it's done. The installation is complete. We can finish. Let's test it. Open a new command prompt. From here, type AZ version. You should see output similar to what's on this screen. That indicates the version and that AZ CLI is installed. We're making some progress. Let's move on to installing VS Code next. We'll close the command prompt and go to the VS Code download page. Here we are at the download page and the link for this, of course, is in the comments below. Download the version that matches your OS. The user installer for Windows is fine for this example and doesn't require admin permissions to install. I'll use the 64-bit and that will start the download. Once finished, let's go back to the download directory and we'll run the VS Code executable. Click accept if you accept the terms. We'll go next. The default settings will work fine for this example. So we can click through so it starts to install. This will take a few seconds to finish. There we go, we finished installing VS Code and we'll make sure that that checkbox to launch Visual Studio Code is checked and click finish. And I'm gonna switch my theme to light and make it a little bigger. You can use whatever settings work best for you. We have a couple more tasks before we finish. Go to extensions. That's the cubes on the left with one of them jumping out. We're going to install three extensions. An extension is like a helper file for specific programming languages. The extension adds features such as language support and autocomplete or other advanced features that make VS Code easier to use. Notice the Azure CLI tool is recommended. Let's install that. Next, search for Terraform. Add the Terraform extension published by HashiCorp. There are a few listed here, so make sure it's the one published by HashiCorp. Next, search for Bracket Pair Colorizer. I'll make this a little bigger. Add the Bracket Pair Colorizer version 2. This is optional, but it's helpful for keeping formatting in order, especially for more complex files. Great, we've got that installed. We can close this. One last thing before we're done. Go to Terminal, New Terminal. 
Enter Terraform version. We should see the same output that we saw previously. Next, enter AZ version. That's good, it's giving us the version. That means we've got Terraform and the AZ CLI installed correctly. And that's it, we now have an environment that's ready to start working with Terraform. I hope that helps you get started with Terraform. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon for notifications of new content, like the next Terraform video. Thanks for watching.